Do you see potassium ion batteries as an alternative um, for sodium ion batteries? And if yes, um, why? Definitely. Um, sodium ion batteries and potassium ion batteries have a lot in common, starting from the um, positive materials that we're using, the cathodes. Um, and then on the, on the um, anode side, we have a couple of advantages for potassium. Um, overall, potassium is a little bit heavier, right? But um, on the other hand, uh, we can achieve a higher potential with potassium batteries. Um, so we should get in the same ballpark with energy density-wise with potassium batteries. Mm -hmm. And what energy densities um, do they offer and what voltage? So recent projections um, say it should be somewhere between 150 to 200 watt hours per kilogram, um, which is more or less what we see now with sodium batteries. Um, in terms of potential, it really depends very much on what cathode material you're using. Um, here um, we have basically everything represented from uh, three and a half volts up to uh, four and a half volts and um, then it depends a little bit what kind of capacity these materials offer um, to, to get to the respective energy density. Mm -hmm. And where is still a room for improvement? Uh, we have a couple of roadblocks. Um, it's still a very immature technology in, in that sense, or I should actually say cell concept really. Um, so uh, we face a lot of challenges um, with the formation of a stable electrode interface which is the one, uh, which sort of the, the one part of a battery that is very crucial for long-term stability. And um, therefore, uh, understanding the formation of these interfaces and um, directing the reactions at these interfaces in a way that batteries can, that these potassium ion batteries can actually last for um, a projected 1,000, 2,000, maybe 10,000 cycles. Um, that is a very big challenge and then of course we have the typical material um, challenges, stability, structural degradation and so on. Mm -hmm. And in which areas uh, has the greatest progress been made? Um, also a difficult question to answer actually because there are so many issues still. Um, I think um, right now um, there's an increasing awareness that we need to treat these batteries in a slightly different way when we perform research. Like a lot of material evaluation, for instance, just use the standard procedures that we used to use for uh, lithium ion batteries. We see this is becoming a problem for sodium. It is definitely a problem for potassium. And people slowly become aware of it that uh, you need to be careful on how to interpret these results. Um, maybe a little bit of a frustrating realization, right? We first need to learn how to um, how to understand our materials properly um, to then fix the issues with the cells. And um, I would say as a second point, um, there's, uh, there's quite some progress happening um, on the electrolyte side of things, which is what I said before, that we try to control these interfaces through um, sort of directing the degradations at the interface, um, stabilizing it in order to produce a long-lasting battery. And then um, with these different electrolytes, we have new opportunities in terms of high or low temperature applications.